Hello, I want to thank you for coming to our webinar for six steps to legacy planning for the generations. And we're going to talk about a lot of topics tonight, um, it should be about a, about a half an hour. Um, so the first question is, a lot of you probably know the gentleman on the right, Tony Soprano, but not sure if you know the man on the left, and we're going to talk about him for a minute. When you're talking about planning, and of course, not fun, but planning for death, you know, one was super sudden and one was not. So this gentleman, Randy, who we're going to talk about in a second, had these questions, what wisdom would you try to impart to the world if you knew it was your last chance? Okay, and he was a professor um, at Carnegie Mellon, and he was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer at age 45. So he knew that he was had some time, um, but that he was going to pass away. So he delivered a last lecture, the last lecture. And if you haven't seen this, it's a really, it's a best-selling book and it's on YouTube. It's a pretty, it's a very moving um, video if anyone wants to take time to um, take a look at it. But um, he got a lot of attention from that and for his planning. So here are some of the quotes that he had. And this is a copy of the book. The key question to keep asking is, are you spending your time on the right things because time is all you have? These are kind of good, good questions to ask anytime in any parts of our life. Um, be prepared, luck is truly where preparation meets opportunity. And to be too cliche, death is a part of life and it's going to happen to all of us. I had the blessing of getting a little bit of advance notice and I'm able to optimize the use of time down the home stretch. So he did maximize his time. On the other hand, James Gandolfini pretty much had a heart attack. Uh, I think it was a heart attack very unexpectedly at age 51. Um, and only 20% of his estate went to his wife. So not only did he not, wasn't able to kind of reflect on his accomplishments, accomplishments in his life, but he also did not, did not do very good planning. So about 30 million of the $70 million in his estate went to taxes. Okay, with planning that could change. Now, most people, you know, don't have tens of millions of dollars, but any kind of planning um, can be good as we move through. So Gallup poll shows that 55% of Americans do not have a will. 44% say they do have a will. Um, and of course, older Americans are more likely to have a will. Now, have, getting a will together is not a lot of fun. And if you are in a second marriage or second relationship, it can be even a little bit trickier. Um, but it is a really pretty critical document to have, um, especially if you have younger kids too, just to kind of name um, who's going to take care of your kids and things like that in that will. So when you pass away with no will or trust, you know, your family may not really know, you know, what you want, what your final wishes are. The family might disagree about your final wishes. And then the estate also goes into probate. And we'll get into this a little bit more. Um, it really, it's divided according to the state law. Okay. And there's no final, maybe no closure for family members because of all of this. So sudden incapacity, incapacity. So if you, you know, get sick and need to be hospitalized or put in a nursing home, again, if you don't have these documents, no one's gonna know your medical wishes. No one might be there to be your advocate um, and can make medical decisions for you. And if you don't have the proper documentation, no one can really get to your money to help you to pay your bills and do things like that. Okay, so the will can be a really critical tool. I remember when I went in to have my kids, they asked me for my will, really the living will, the healthcare directive. Um, so they do do that a lot when you're going in for surgery and things like that, but just important to have it because you never know what can happen. And what's really hard is that estate planning means thinking of dying. We all do it, but we really don't want to think about it. I know I don't, um, but it is really not, it's not the most fun topic to think about. Okay, so, but really important. So no estate plan, with no estate plan, heirs may be subject to a number of obstacles, probate, which can take a long time getting um, different, different assets into your name versus into the deceased names. There could be creditors, especially if no one's on top of their bills, lawsuits, judgments, legal fees, and that could all compromise the value of a legacy. So some common problems, again, no will or trust or advanced health care directives were created overlooking different things like guardianship for minors, no tax planning, could be cash shortage for survivors. Um, I have a client who, um, you know, we talk about a lot of this, she has full estate plan done, 
And what she did was um, there's a way to make, if you have a regular investment account or even a, a savings account at the bank, you can make that transfer on death or payable on death. So if something should happen to you, that money can go to someone very quickly. They would just have to really provide um, a death certificate and set up an account and stuff like that, but not, not that crazy um, or intense time-wise. And that way someone would have money to help pay for any kind of legal fees, any, um, you know, any funeral costs and things like that. So it's, it's a good strategy to have as well. Um, benefits, again, healthcare wishes gets um, put out there so people know exactly what you want. Also, you can make a list of possessions to go to the heirs you choose without wrangling or dispute. I know um, my mom keeps talking about, she has a lot of old furniture in her house um, and jewelry and things that have been passed down to her from my grandparents um, and great grandparents. And so she is going to, she really wants to make a list of, you know, what does everybody get so that that's all, all stated out. When you do have these things, it avoids additional unplanned legal expenses, any kind of disputes, and it provides for loved ones not otherwise uh, protected. So there's also the intangible side of character assets, like your values, your health, you know, passing along, you know, a little bit about who you are. Now, I don't know if you guys know, but my father passed away when he was 45. I knew him, but I was about 16 when he died. And you know, it would have been great to have more information about him. We did have some journals from when he was in the Peace Corps, which are pretty cool to take a look at, but, you know, didn't really know him that well. And it'd be great to have a little bit more information um, from him about who he was after he passed away. There's also different things he, you know, for, and just in my case, he was a business owner. He was an attorney um, and was supposedly very good in court and things like that. So, you know, just kind of getting a sense of these things um, can help. So generational planning is a modern intentional two-phase process that expands estate planning's research reach and helps you plan your legacy. So really it's these two things. So passing on the tangible wealth, like we talk about, you know, IRAs, beneficiaries for IRAs, things like that. And then also the second one really are conveying your family's values and history to the next generation, which is pretty important. Um, one thing that I started looking at, because I love to journal, and there's this thing called the Me Journal, and I started, before I moved, I started filling it out, I need to get back to it, but it really was pretty cool because it lays out all this stuff um, that would be about me, some stuff I actually was learning even about myself as I was going through it, because I'm not a big one for favorite movies and stuff like that, I just, I like lots of different things. Um, but this, this book really went through quite a bit. So even getting a me journal or something to prompt you is pretty cool. Um, it's a fun process. So I, haven't, I need to pick it back up again. I haven't done it in a while, but I enjoyed it when I was doing it. And if something happened to me, you know, my kids would have this record of really who I was and what I want, you know, I like and stuff like that. So a successful legacy plan um, basically leaves enough assets to your spouse um, so that they can live comfortably and manage their finances make sure the kids are ready for any kind of inheritance. So would you want your kids to get money right away or not? Um, and also saving taxes and investing versus spending. Um, also grandchildren and future generations, you may wanna leave grandkids some money. Um, you also may want to you know, impart some wisdom on them through these documents. And then again, also just other folks using your contributions to carry on, you know, the good work that you've been doing. So we have, a, there's a six step legacy planning process that really kind of encapsulates all these different things. So the first is really planning for incapacity. So when you look at this, we wanna make sure we have an advanced directive for healthcare. So whoever's in charge of that can understand through documentation or through discussions what you want, and then they can, carry out your wishes. And then of course, the power of attorney for finances. So if someone has a power of attorney, they can, um, you know, we have that on file and then they would call and we would um, help them to get whatever they wanted uh, from your account. So one other thing too is with the, so we're actually with the move, we're in the process of updating and redoing our wills and estate plan. 
And one thing I want to do is that since my oldest turned 18, he actually, um, if he went to a hospital, uh, let's say he got in a car accident or something, I mean, God forbid, but and he, if we showed up, he would, they would not um, be able to really speak with us because we don't have a healthcare directive for him in place. So now that he's considered an adult, they don't have to answer any questions or anything like that. So, you know, depending on different stages of you and your kids and where everything is, you want to make sure that um, you're really set up and have all your T's crossed and your I's dotted. So the number, next thing is really to get organized. Okay, so really taking a look at um, property that you have that you're going to be divvying up again, uh, you know, to the beneficiaries. In a lot of cases, you could actually do even a holographic, which is a handwritten will. I know in New Jersey, um, at least a couple of years ago, you could. So you could essentially write something down. It's always better, I believe, to get an attorney. This is one spot where I think it's, it is really worth getting a good estate planning attorney to help you out. Um, you want to see if your estate will be subject to estate taxes. Those are pretty high, but in New Jersey and New York, um, the federal limits are much higher than the state limits. So you want to take a look at that. And then really make it easy on spouse and kids. So make sure they know where everything is and how to get to it and what to do. Um, and then explanations for your decisions and things like that. So um, in, as you know, in the household, there's usually one spouse that kind of takes care of all the financial stuff. So in my household, of course I do, and um, I give Ryan all this information so he can, <laughs> know where stuff is if should something happen to me um but think about the people you love and the causes you care about so you may just different consider different things what if your spouse dies first what if the woman dies before the man or what have you um how do you want to divide up the assets um grand grandkids friends other relatives um is there kids that don't feel ready to handle inheritance i know mine would most likely not be at all at this point in time um, and then if you have special needs ch children, that's a whole different story and a whole different specialty. Um, but that's also a big deal. We do have clients that we get involved in helping with that. Um, there's some real specific things and very technical things that are needed in those cases as well. And, um, you know, you just want to make sure you're talking to your spouse and kids about what's going on so they, they know. Um, it is good to work with financial prof professionals to get this stuff in writing. Um, so again, a will is, so, so you have healthcare directive, power of attorney, two really important documents, and then you have your will. And what we try to do is we actually try to have as much stuff not passed through the will as possible. So for example, you know, we do like to have joint assets for a couple or a, a payable or transfer on death for some assets so that that doesn't have to go through probate. So if if, if I were to pass away um, and uh, it was an account in my name and I didn't have payable on death or anything, then Ryan couldn't get to that money until the, the account actually changed over so that there were, so that his name was on the account instead of mine. And that can take, you know, a long time for that to kind of happen. Just like car ownership, home ownership, all those kind of things. The spouses, it isn't as bad, but um, if it's kids, versus parents and stuff, it can take a lot of time. Okay, so everything needs to be coordinated. So most estates are pretty simple, but some are really complicated. Um, and again, it is really best to work with a specific estate planning attorney and they can make you aware of different things. They have a lot of experience in this area, more than I do. We help along the way, but they really, um, you know, good to have a specialist that has seen a lot of this stuff in the past. So just creating a family legacy. Again, I talked about that knee journal. So some people might be into this or not, but, um, you know, writing down memories, putting together scrap scrapbook or photo albums. Now that all our pictures are on our phones, it makes it a little bit tricky. Um, I do like having those paper albums, uh, different family recipes. Um, we use recipes for my grandmother all the time. She, she passed away maybe 10 years ago. And then any special skills, if you want to pass those along as well. Then part six, you really want to monitor and update the plan. So things change, you know, people get married, divorce, deaths, births, um, and you might change your mind about something. So I'm not saying you need to change your will every couple of years, but if you do have life changes, it is important to make sure that things get set up properly in the way that you want them to be set up. 
So this is just different goals at a timetable. So really, if you go to an attorney, they're going to get all this stuff together for you. Um, you'll have to make a list of your own accounts and passwords, get together your important papers. Um, we'll be putting together some more stuff on this as well going forward, um, just to make it a little bit easier. We actually, um, for clients, we do have Wealth Vision, um, which we use as a financial planning software in all accounts. And there's documents and things that can be uploaded into that, like wills, passports, drivers, like all kinds of stuff can be uploaded into there. And it's a secure portal uh, where people could get to things. So there is some um, data collection that we can help you with if, that, if you want. And again, um, I can help with some estate planning attorneys, mostly in New Jersey, and try to get some referrals for those that are in different states. Um, but very important to have good people and good tax advisors as well. And you know, just important to really kind of stay on track um, with preparing. And then it just be good when you're ready to have whoever your trusted person is ready to step in if you need help. Um, make sure your records are organized and they're all accessible, that everyone's provided for, and you'll be remembered for unique contributions if you go through this entire process. So not hard, just have to get started, just little by little. Um, and that's it. So I'm gonna um, stop the recording now and we will go and, and have a conversation with questions. Okay, so thank you very much for your time.